I'm bad, do it no cap Only got one, so you better go live it up Cash in the bag, stay young tag Baby, I'm bad, baby, I'm bad I got the cash in the bag Hello guys and welcome back to my channel, I'm Demon Berserker. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Copper Bank Vault build here in Back for Blood. So in this build, we are concerned with one thing and one thing only, copper, and how we can amass as much of it as humanly possible. So this is really quite a powerful sleeper build because with enough copper, you can essentially buy full upgrades on each and every level, making this one of the strongest cooperative party friendly builds in the entire game. With plenty of copper, you can also ensure that players are sufficiently healed up between stages, as well as being able to buy med kits for the healers or by using wall kits. That way you can remove that much unwanted trauma that has accumulated from taking damage, especially on the harder difficulties. Making sure everyone is topped up on ammo and grenades is another perk of this build, as well as being able to have a toolkit at hand for each and every level. This is even great for carrying randoms through the game, since having enough money can pretty much just ram through all the content. So with that in mind, let's get to it and break down the build. First up we have Hazard Pay. Gain 250 bonus copper at the start of each level. And Share the Wealth. Each teammate gains 100 bonus copper at the start of each level. These are great because they take effect immediately. So as soon as you are starting a level, or even a fresh campaign, you can instantly begin each stage by having more copper on hand. Most of the other cards will not kick in until after you've completed a level first, and can vary by how much was collected. But with these first two, you can get a guaranteed amount to kick things off with. It's also important to note that this only counts when loading into a safe room, and will not count at the start of any ridden hive entrances. Then we have Copper Scavenger. You can sense nearby copper, more copper piles spawn. I believe this adds two additional piles of 50 copper into each level, and stacks per each player running the card. Additionally, the ability to sense nearby copper adds a blue highlight around them, so we can spot them easier hiding inside cars and other obscure places. This helps to make sure we are finding each and every pile hidden throughout the level, and are gathering as many as possible. Then we have Money Grubbers. Each time your team loots copper, you gain 3 additional copper up to 25 times. This may seem like it starts out low, but within just 8 piles you've already begun breaking over 100 additional copper, and it can actually start to skyrocket if you get a bunch within a single level, like if you use a legendary pipe bomb. Then we have Lucky Pennies. Whenever you or your team loots copper, you have a 35% chance to find 100% additional copper. This means that just over a third of the time we pick up copper, we actually gain double the amount. This was much less in the past, and actually received a buff as one of the most recent patches a while back. And we also have Bounty Hunter. When you or your team kills a mutation, gain 10 copper up to 300 per level. This one you could probably take out on the lesser difficulties, however on Nightmare and No Hope, where there is an abundance of specials, this one really starts to shine, and you will almost certainly be hitting the max amount in each of the levels. We have Compound Interest, each cleaner gains 5% of their total copper in each safe room. This one also starts out kinda low at first, and so it reminds me of the real life motto of, you need money to make money. At higher levels, however, this can really start to snowball and accumulate into a hefty amount and helps to support the entire team while doing so. And I've also opted for Stealthy Passage. Allows disarming of doors, car alarms, and birds. The target will trigger if you are interrupted. Disables Quick Slot. Team Effect gain 25 copper per success. This is just the icing on the cake on our quest to gather even more copper. And no, I'm afraid this card does not stack or combine with the other copper cards such as Money Grabbers. It does however net us a bit of copper while disarming other harmful traps and that can add up quickly. Also there's many times where this card can actually make the difference between in completing the stage objective in the case where you cannot set off an alarm. Sometimes there's a door or flock of birds in the direct path of where you're going and that people would otherwise just shoot or set off costing you the objective. But now we can instead disarm it 
preventing us from losing the objective and gaining just a bit of cash for the team in the process. You also may have noticed I am using Carly for this setup as well, although not required, her ability to perceive threats and alarms with a reddish glow can help alert us ahead of time and give us a heads up to make noticing and disarming traps a little bit easier. But now with all the copper cards out of the way, it's time to get into our damage portion. Because we're extremely limited in our remaining cards, I've opted for a fast swap double gun setup as it doesn't require much to get going and allows us to be loose with whatever guns we might happen to come across out in the field. The so first up we have admin reload, when you stow your weapon it reloads. This is a core piece and must have in any double gun setup as it negates all downtime of reloading. We can always be firing our gun while simultaneously reloading the other, creating a steady stream of firepower to push back the hordes. And then we have ammo stash, your secondary weapons have unlimited ammo but reload 20% slower. Since we won't have as much space for damage in this build, we're going to be spraying out much more bullets to take down foes and this helps to conserve just a little bit of the team's ammo supply. We can mostly use our sidearm for the normal ridden and swap to our heavier hitting primary as needed for the hordes and mutations. We aren't as punished by the reload speed penalty quite as bad either since instead of waiting on the gun to reload, we will instead be swapping to our alternate gun while it's busy reloading on its own. We will also be hunting for the Embezzler legendary sidearm as this will net us even more copper per kill as we're going about each level. Until then, I also quite like Carly's Tech 9 so this will work fine in the meantime. Then we have Cocky, this adds plus 75 weapon swap speed. When you take damage, your accuracy is reduced for 3 seconds. Since we're going to be swapping weapons quite often, rather than reloading normally, this will help to get to and from each weapon even faster and make the double gun vibe feel even better and much snappier. We have Run Like Hell, this adds plus 12% move speed, plus 15% sprint speed. When you take damage, you lose the benefits for 3 seconds. It's worth dedicating at least one card to movement speed so we can better keep up with the group, and since we're looking to disarm traps, it's good to be able to push up out in front so we can be the first ones to spot danger and alert the team to upcoming hazards. It will also help us to retreat quicker if need be, since we won't have as much damage to burst kill things outright on the higher difficulties. Then we have silver bullets, this gives us plus 10% bullet damage. This will help just to bump up our bullet damage just a bit, as well as hyperfocus sneak in a hefty amount of 50% weak spot damage in just a single card. And lastly we have good old glass cannon to bring in a thick with 2 C's amount of raw damage into the mix and to squeak out as much damage potential as we can. So there you have it guys, if you enjoy supporting your team financially and helping to buy buffs and other upgrades, then this build effectively turns you into the Fat Stacks Team Sugar Daddy. So if that's your thing, then go for it and sound off in the comments below on what you think of this economy style deck. That's it for this video, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and click the notifications bell for updates on my latest videos. Thank you to everyone who made it to the end, I love you all so much and I'll catch you guys in the next video.